Hey guys, what's going on? Back again with another video. So I was a little bit reluctant to make this video uh, because I've seen on YouTube uh, there's been like a new wave of Easter egg hunters, Easter egg solvers for some of the old maps. Uh, some of the new people are going back uh, to try and solve stuff that uh, was never maybe explained to them, that they never really uh, knew the solve for. Some of them have come up with some uh, cool stuff that looks to be like solves. And then some of them, or some of the stuff they've come up with, uh, are not solves at all. And uh, a lot of it has been solved, but at the same time, I don't want to, and I know Jimmy Zielinski had mentioned this in the past, I don't ever want to take away that experience from someone solving it for the first time and again this goes back to the whole Jason Blundell interviews during Black Ops 3 where he may or may not have given some answers away and some hints away so even though a lot of the stuff has been solved for Black Ops 3 a lot of it has in, uh, explanations I don't want to go in their comment section because I might you know might be against TOS anyways and, and give them the answer in the solves so I'm kind of watching from the shadows <laughs> not to sound corny but or watching from uh, the side almost like a fly on the wall also and seeing what they come up with seeing their reaction how they saw stuff for the first time uh, and the reason I mentioned that is because also, I've seen Jason Lindell and some of the old directors of Zombies and some of the devs talk about stuff that, um, or how they started in the industry. And for me, um, obviously I was an Easter egg hunter. It was more like a, a challenge to myself and um, I, a challenge being, you know, can you, or you, can you figure it out and can you be the first one to figure it out? Uh, and so that's kind of how I started uh, I actually ended up helping Treyarch and some other studios with some stuff down the road later later uh, more recently since uh, you know 2017 about so it's been about six years um, but like I said uh, some of them talk some of the directors talk about them being um, programmers coders artists illustrators uh, I don't know what other um, positions they had but for me I was always an Easter egg hunter to start with so it's kind of cool to go back as a hobby now and kind of solve some stuff that hasn't been solved uh, it, it does feel a little bit weird going back and solving I guess other people's work and I tell people when you go back and solve stuff too it helps you solve some of the newer stuff so I'm actually very um, trying to be very patient for everybody to get caught up and maybe move on to the newer games like Cold War, Vanguard, Black Ops 4 and solve some of the Easter eggs, what some of the maps meant, what some of the inspiration was for some of those maps. Uh, again, this is a new wave of people that are starting back, I guess maybe Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3 and go in the shadows of evil trying to maybe look and solve stuff. Again, some of them are so stumbling across stuff that have already been solved. And again, I'm going to mention, I don't want to go in the comment section and kind of be, say like, hey, this is right, or that's right, and that's wrong. Because you do ruin the experience for people. However, again, I'm going to mention it. Um, it is where I started, what I originally did. I love going back and seeing how everything was pieced together. Unfortunately, like I've mentioned, uh, a lot of uh, the maps had um, more time put into them. Obviously, Black Ops 3 maps, you can't compare it. Uh, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3 maps, maybe even Black Ops 1 had a, a longer dev cycle. Or the newer ones, uh, unfortunately, they're, they're kind of just, um, you know, putting in because Battle Royale is popular, multiplayer is always popular, and uh, campaign is always popular. So, with all that being said, again, this is a new solve that... Uh, like I said, it's still a hobby for me. It's something I still love to do. So on the Daraz and Drak poster, uh, there's these set of numbers, 12, 29, 17, and 80. Um, some people have had theories. Some people have solved stuff. So I think I solved the 1780 part of it. And again, that's the poster. This is back in 2017. So I'll show you how I kind of come up with stuff, how you do your research. Uh, I kind of just search to see what people have come up with any ideas. Unfortunately, you got to be careful. You got to know who you're looking at 
be familiar with some of the people in the zombie, some of the zombie YouTubers, uh, and then some of the people in the zombies community, because I mentioned always, zombie community, zombie YouTubers are two different things. Zombie YouTubers just kind of clickbait to make money, do whatever they can to make money. Uh, I saw that, um, so I don't know if this is necessarily the zombies community or the zombies YouTuber, but... Saw that somebody mentioned, like, um, Frankenstein. I think what happened was, in the Rise and Drop poster, they might have saw something that looked like Frankenstein, maybe in a, in, a, in a teaser. I think it was the Tesla coil, Death Ray. And people just kind of, you know, clickbait a video and say, hey, it's Frankenstein, you know, we're going to create Frankenstein. Which was interesting. Um, now, I don't know if that is just a weird coincidence. Um, um, or maybe it was something that they were meant to do. So, um, what I got from that was, like I said, could have been clickbait. It could have been dumb luck that somebody just threw something to the wall and said, Hey, I'm just going to make some clickbait Frankenstein confirmed, uh, which most of them do. Like I said, it's no big secret. Um, they just do that to make money off YouTube. So. How this is actually a solve is Luigi Galvani, who, if you have to know how it's a solve, the first part being is, um, his name is Luigi, the Rise and Drax Castle is based off of, uh, a couple things, one of those things is the Super Mario Brothers, uh, Bowser's Castle, um, you know, Bowser being a dragon, and there's a lot of dragons in the Rise and Drax Castle, and Luigi is Mario's brother, the Super Mario Brothers. Mario being um, Mario being the main star, and Luigi being the brother. So that's how this first gets solved. And in 1780, he's the first one to create a zombie. And how he created a zombie was he chopped off frog legs, uh, frog's legs, uh, to. Um, put electricity to the frog's legs and the frog legs comes alive. I don't know if he did necessarily entire frog, but just for this, we're going to use frog legs so I don't sound like I'm clickbaiting or trying to make everything fit. So, and then that's maybe how the whole Frankenstein stuff maybe fits in also because Mary Shelley, who wrote the original Frankenstein, uh, got inspiration from Luigi Galvani's work. Um, same thing in real life. Same thing goes on. Anything that gets discovered or made, made in uh um or something that happens in science or real life gets made into a story uh it's always happened for centuries um you're thinking of like floods and stuff like that tsunamis and floods it gets put into work and you think about the pandemic stuff like that also is getting put into more and more uh movies nowadays and stuff like that so um, his work was that he created the first zombie, he made a frog come, frog's legs come back to life, he used electricity, same story as uh, Frankenstein, where he, you know, put electricity to, the, to Frankenstein, and, well, Frankenstein is the doctor, the monster is the one that we know, so he put electricity to a guy, um, and he came back to life in the story. In real life, this guy put electricity to frog legs, uh, again, it fits because he did it in 1780. Uh, that's in here somewhere, but uh, yeah, it says in 1780 he discovered that muscles of dead frog legs twitch when struck by electrical sparks. We have a bunch of electricity in the rise and drop with the Tesla coil, with the death ray, and um, I'll show you how it all fits perfectly. And there's probably more to it, but like I said, I just kind of get people going in the right direction. Uh, there is another guy, Alessandro Volta, who created the battery. I don't think we have anything with batteries in the Rise and Drop, but uh, those two kind of were um, friends, but they were c competitive against each other. Um, so again, just to kind of do a quick little recap, Luigi is Mario's brother. Uh, the Rise and Gas Castle is roughly based off of Mar Mario and Bowser's castle. There's a plunger. Mara is a plumber. That's how all that fits together. And that was all confirmed by Treyarch and some of the devs years ago. Uh, I made videos about that years ago also. Um, so another way is uh, in the cutscene for Drives and Drag, it says, first I took your legs, referencing the frog legs that he used. Um, a little hint or referencing, 
referencing the uh, legs for the experiment. He says, first I take you, uh, Edward Richtofen says, first I took your legs, uh, and I'm going to take your soul, I think, or, or life or something like that. So that's kind of a little bit of a hint, uh, and this is this guy's uh, video that I saw, Beans Plays, just to give him credit, because um, I don't, don't think I saw an official Call of Duty Triarch video up there. Um, and then, as you guys know as well, in the Rising Rock, the Wonder Weapon uh, is the Ragnarok DG4. And you kind of leapfrog with electricity. If you think about it now, you're jumping like a frog. And you think about it when you're watching your teammates smash around with the Ragnaroks. You look like a leapfrog just jumping around. Um, now, there are some stuff also that I want to mention. You go into the second... Um, dragon statue some of the stuff looks like lily pads those green screens i guess they're hinting at lily pads green lily pads um you know the main hub i guess you can call it um, before you go down and grab her bow you can build the um the shield there and you, from the courtyard you go in there some of those big giant green screens looks like lily pads uh so i guess that was another hint there uh, there's probably more stuff I doubt I did go on the other day and I looked at it and um, Didn't really see too much other stuff um, Maybe they ran out of time. Maybe there's stuff that I'm missing. Maybe there's stuff like I said other people add on to it Maybe because uh, I've done that before I've made a video and people have said hey you missed this part or this connects with that I'm like, oh, okay, that's pretty brilliant. I'll make another video and follow up on it So you think about the gravity spikes with electricity you you look like a leapfrog Leaping around and it all makes sense perfectly now why that was the one the weapon uh, of choice that they used uh, again use um, Electricity and stuff like that uh, so that was actually a really cool idea. And like I said, it just goes to show again how much detail they went into making these uh, maps back then. Uh, the time and care that was put into it. Uh, again, I don't know how this person... Uh, I guess that's just dumb luck or give credit to them. I don't want to take any credit or discourage anyone. Hey, any little idea could be right. Uh, but again, it was obviously like some type of clickbait that happened to stumble across, um, a solve because there were rumors or clickbait about, oh, we're going to have a civil protector, which is funny. I mean, I can't take anything away from that people. Like the only problem I have with it is if people have sold it as, or, or presented it as, Hey, I have a theory. What if like, you know, the testicoil in the cutscene means that we might get a, you know, Frankenstein's monster or something like Leroy. Uh, I mean, that person did, but obviously there's videos out there that clickbaited that said, um, you know, I, I have inside information. And I tell people to, um, I'm always going to be a small content creator because I don't ever clickbait. To get your channel to millions of views, to hundreds of thousands, not millions of views, millions of subscribers to hundreds of thousands of subscribers you have to clickbait uh it's no secret uh i just get in trouble for saying it i i'll never do that though i'll never stoop that low to have to clickbait to 100 uh clickbait to kind of get views and, and subs and stuff like that but like i said unfortunately that's just the the nature of the business if you want to become a huge streamer huge content creator huge youtuber you gotta lie and clickbait um and you tell people, hey, I have all this information. I know somebody that works with Treyarch or whatever the case is. You make up fake Twitter accounts. I still see a lot of that going on. That hey, this person on Twitter, uh, you know, has inside information and just um, you know says a whole bunch of nonsense in their videos. Uh, but it happened to work in this case. Um, but I think, or maybe the. The person who made videos on YouTube saw this guy's theory of idea, didn't credit him on it um, because I did. I don't know the time. I didn't go back and like match up the times. But again, um, you go back and you see how people steal people's ideas. They don't credit them for it. This guy probably came up with some Frankenstein idea or maybe helped solve it. So whoever this person is that deleted all this. 
uh, or delete their account. Maybe they were working for Treyarch, or maybe it did have inside information, um, but uh, it did help in the solve. So I, I definitely want to credit this little thread. Most of it's been deleted. Um, maybe they didn't want to get in trouble. Maybe back then they didn't want to get in trouble. Maybe they um, were trying to help the zombies community come up with ideas of what was coming for the rise and drop. Uh, but anyways, you might want to research this guy, look at some stuff, uh, but it is pretty cool the length that they go for uh, some of these Easter eggs uh, back then. Uh, anyways, I'll see you guys later. Thanks.